how to do a dihybrid cross. Di means two, and hybrid we know to mean heterozygous. So we are crossing two heterozygous organisms, but they are both heterozygous for two different traits. I'm gonna use colors so that I can tell the difference. Heterozygous for seed shape in peas would be round or wrinkly. And I'm gonna use red and blue so that we don't confuse it with color. So round, I'm gonna do a capital blue R, and wrinkly, I'm gonna use the lowercase red R. For seed color, I will do a capital yellow Y. And Ys are hard to tell apart, so I'm gonna be careful to do my lowercase Y with a little loop so that we can absolutely tell the difference. And we have two of those organisms. They're both heterozygous for both of those traits. So capital and lowercase R's again, and capital and lowercase Y's again. So on my Punnett square, this time I have 16 squares instead of four, and I am going to do all the possible combinations across the top. So I could have a capital R with a capital Y. I'm gonna do one of each trait for each of my combos. I could have a capital R with a lowercase y. I could have a lowercase r with a capital Y or I could have a lowercase r with a lowercase y. So those are my four possible combinations of the two different traits for those alleles. And since I'm crossing two heterozygous organisms, I'm gonna do the same thing down the other side because the parent organisms both have the same possibilities. So my capitals and my lowercases and then my y's as well, my capitals, so that I have all of my unique combinations. So I'm ready to start my Punnett square. So just like a regular Punnett square, you are gonna bring in your R from the top, your R from the side, but you're also going to do this, the Ys into the same box. My next square, I'll do the same thing, all the way across all the squares. So I have one capital, two capital Rs, and then I have one of each Y. And you can do this in all one color, but for this video, I'm doing my colors consistently so that you can really track where those traits are coming from in my Punnett square. It's also helping with my telling Y's apart. So my top row is done. And I'll just keep going down my Punnett square just like you do with a regular Punnett square. So when I come into this box, I have my two capital R's and then one of each Y. Two capital R's, two lowercase Y's, capital R from the side, lowercase r from the top. Again, just to be consistent, we always write the capital letter first. Capital R, lowercase r, lowercase y, lowercase y. Just to check in, if you're a little stuck on the Punnett square, remember I'm taking this top r right here and bringing it all the way down to the bottom, and then this other R from the side is coming in. Same thing, my top Y right there comes down, and then the Y from the side right there comes across. Okay, so my Punnett square is totally filled out. Now I'm gonna draw myself a little guide so that I can tell what these peas would look like, and I'm gonna actually draw a pea into every box so that I can just look at my information at a glance and figure it out. So first with our parent peas, if we have a capital R, that means it's round, and a capital Y will mean it's yellow, we would have to have two lowercase r's to be wrinkly and two lowercase y's to be green. So our parent peas are two round yellow peas. And so every box that has at least one capital R and at least one capital Y is going to be round and yellow. So I'm just going to draw my little round yellow P in each of those boxes so that I can look at my, at my information at a glance. I'm going to try to be distinctive when I go to do the wrinkly P's so that I can really tell them apart. Maybe I'll even do a different outline. So, so far, the whole top row, round and yellow. So here's my first green P. And it is still round, but it has two recessive traits for color, so it is green. And here is another round green P. Back to our yellows. Okay, this one's different. This is wrinkly and yellow. So I'm gonna do 
different shapes that we can absolutely tell it apart. I'll color it in yellows. There's my yellow wrinkly pea. This one is wrinkly and yellow as well. Back to round and yellow. This one is round and green. Another wrinkly yellow. And our last one is our first and only wrinkly green. So now I'm gonna do my phenotype ratio. Genotype, there are a lot of different genotype options here. We can come back to that if you need it. But for my phenotype ratio, I'm going to count how many round yellow peas do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's nine. How many round green peas do I have? I see three. How many wrinkly yellows? Three. And how many wrinkly greens? Just one. So if you're looking for the phenotype ratio of a dihybrid cross, it is nine to three to three to one. I hope this helps.